this is our Tripoli 412 power system 2 lab project we are group num 8 we have IEEE 39 bus system also known as New England power system we did load flow analysis like we did in our experiment for parallel transformers we divided the loading limits equally between two transformers for two Gen parallel generators duplicacy value 2 is used in load flow we followed newton Raphson, used flat start and applied constraints it took four iterations to solve the load flow here is our load flow summary we can see the generated power load and losses from here our task 2 was to find the frequency response of the system. Frequency response is a vital factor for power system security, which is defined as the ability of a power system to arrest and then stabilize rapid change in frequency after a major disturbance. Contingencies such as tripping of a large generator or an interconnection can cause a sudden decline in system frequency. We performed the frequency response analysis for the outage of generator 8. This is our load shedding scheme. Here is the frequency excursion curve. We can see the frequency nadir 48.944 Hz. Frequency response with LFR or load frequency relief can improve the rock off and frequency nadir of the system. The third task is frequency response with load frequency relief. Uh, there can be some frequency dependent loads on the system, usually rotating loads like motor. Their consumable power is proportional to the frequency. Uh, when frequency start to fall, their demand also start to decrease by some amount which makes the load generation difference loss from the actual power mismatch due to contingency which leads to better frequency response so we vary the kp value and changes the frequency excursion curve firstly when kp value is 1% rookoff is 0.163494 hertz per second and frequency nadir is uh, 48.97 Hz when KP is 2% Rukov is 0.142253 Hz per second and frequency nadir is 48.994 Hz when KP is 3% Rukov is 0.10891 Hz per second and frequency nadir is 48.998 Hz so we can clearly see that when we uh, increase the KP value frequency nadir is increased and Rukov is decreased that means when we increase the KP value, Rukov and frequency nadir both are improved. Well, let us talk about step 4 of this project. In this portion, we have performed QV analysis and ranking of the passes using reactive power margin RPM in terms of voltage stability with PSC software. If we talk about voltage stability in a power system, it typically depends on voltage stability indices and uh, Typically, such kind of stability indices are used. In this project, we work with the first one, reactive power margin. Okay, this is our QV curve, and this curve is constructed using the continuation method by increasing reactive power load while keeping the real power load constant. And this is the bottom point of this QV curve, and this point specifies the stability limit or collapse point of the system. And uh, this point is base case operating point, and this is the level of this point. And the difference between uh, this level, base case operating points level, and this collapse point indicates reactive power margin. And we have to keep in our mind that the bus with lowest reactive power margin is most vulnerable to voltage instability. Uh, if we talk about QV analysis with PSCC software, uh, we have taken raw file and we did load flow analysis. And after that, we performed QV analysis on selected buses. And for the whole process, 
uh, we have used full Rapson method as solution engine. After performing QB analysis, uh, we have got reactive power margin for all buses. And for example, uh, here is the QB curve for bus 4 and the difference between this base case operating point and this collapse point indicates reactive power margin. At last, we noted the RPM values and using them, we rank the buses from stronger to weaker in terms of voltage stability. Hello everyone, my name is Koshik. My student ID is 160609. In task 5 of this project, we have designed a scheme for load shading. We have 18 load buses in the system and we have divided them into 4 zones according to the data from QB analysis. Here zone 1 and zone 4 are strong and weak zones respectively and other 2 are moderate ones. We have assigned 4 scheme for 4 zones. Here zone 1 is assigned to scheme 1 as it is the strongest zone we haven't cut much load from this zone you can see that when the frequency reaches 49 hertz we have only shaded five percent of the load and if we look at the moderate ones here we have shaded more loads than the strong zone but uh, not more than the weakest zone and finally on scheme 4 most of the load will be shaded as the frequency falls to 49 hertz you can see that as the frequency reaches 49 hertz 30 percent of the whole load will be shaded from this zone now if we look at the frequency response we can see that for kp equals to 0 we we get frequency nadir at 49.95 hertz and the rock up is 0 0.16 hertz per second um, before zoning out the buses the frequency nadir was 49.4 hertz and after the zone noise load shading we can see improvement in our frequency nadir now in task 6 we'll investigate the impact of load frequency relief here we'll change the value of kp from 1% to 3% we can see that for kp equals to 1% the frequency nadir is 48.98 hertz and the rock up is 0 0.1479 hertz per second and for kp equals to 2% the frequency nadir is 48.995 hertz and the rock up is 0 0.131 hertz per second and finally for kp equals to 3% the frequency nadir is 48.998 hertz and the rock up is 0. 104 hertz per second we can see that for the increase in kp the frequency nadir is improving and the rock up is also improving now if we compare the frequency nadir and rock up value of the system before and after load shading we can see that after load shading both the values of frequency nadir and rock up has improved so that was the presentation for the project thank you for your patience